Really? Goldberg. Goldberg. Your answer for getting ratings back on Monday Night Raw is Goldberg. Oh my god, man. Why Goldberg? Really? You got to be joking me. Goldberg? Really? Is Goldberg really the best you can do? Seriously? Goldberg! Goldberg! Is this really how Drew's reign ends? Seriously? Is this how Drew McIntyre's run comes to an end? After all that work that you've done for Drew McIntyre, this man has been carrying your company, has been carrying Monday Night Raw since he won the title last year. And this is how you thank him? You put him in a title program with Goldberg? Give me a break. Haven't we seen enough of Oldberg? Haven't we seen enough of him? Jesus Christ, man. If he wins the WWE title at Royal Rumble, I'm going to be so damn pissed. You know, I would rather Miz as WWE Champion. I'm not even kidding. I would have rather Miz cash in his briefcase and win the title at Royal Rumble. Seriously. Goldberg is not needed. And we all know that. So the show so the show began with Miz and Morrison, hey hey ho ho. They were on Miz TV, doing Miz TV, and their guests were the New Day, and the New Day were poking fun at them with the correct thing. I I, I just really, I was just not really enjoying this segment. This segment was kind of driving me insane. Like, I love the New Day, but Jesus, sometimes they can get very annoying. And it all led to a tag team match where we had Teddy Long, holla, holla, holla player, come to the ring and he makes a tag team match. The New Day get the victory. And it seems like they're starting to kind of build to Miz and Morrison's eventual breakup. Because, here's the thing, Miz has been starting to get kind of, bit, getting a bit annoyed with John Morrison. So it's kind of making me think that John Morrison is going to be the one that costs the Miz his money in the bank briefcase. I think Miz is going to cash in and John Morrison could eventually lead to, you know, costing him that match. Then we had AJ Styles taking on Elias again. This was the second time we had these two face off for the title. Uh, not for the title. What am I saying? I'm all over the place. Really. Um, all this is the second time they have been facing e facing off against each other. Styles wins again. This, is, this is, He wins again for a second time. Kind of surprising, really, because normally WWE does like a 50-50 booking. And uh, at first I thought Elias and Jackson Riker were the faces, but I think after tonight, I think I'm kind of leaning towards AJ Styles. Because if Jackson Riker and Elias were the faces, they would not have backed away. Especially with how uh, the ending happened. Is that the ending had uh, Jackson Riker come into the ring with Elias' guitar, and big, and big boy Omo, Omos kicks it out of his hand. He kicks the guitar out of his hand. So, yeah. Kind of makes me think that Elias is the face. We had Angel Gaza throughout the show trying to, you know, impress some of the ladies. I think you all knew where, where this is going to be leading to. Then we had Charlotte Flair and Oscar take on Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce.
and Ric Flair would trip Lysiette would end up tripping Charlotte Flair. Ric Flair would end up tripping Charlotte, making her lose this match, pinning her clean. A roll-up is a clean victory, by the way. People call roll-ups a clean win. So this was technically a clean win. So Charlotte loses clean here to Peyton Royce. Very, very surprising. But I have to say, Peyton Royce really made a big botch during the match where Charlotte hit the natural selection. You guys know what I'm talking about if you guys saw it. I'm not really putting the blame on Charlotte. I can't put the blame on her. I love Peyton Royce, but I have to put all the blame on her. I don't think Billy Kay would have botched as bad as Peyton Royce did there. I think Billy Kay would have done, you know, a better job. And I think this is now confirming that Billy Kay is, in my opinion, possibly better than Peyton Royce because I because I feel like Billy Kay, you know, she's getting some success. Yes, Peyton Royce pinning Charlotte Flair is a good sign for Peyton Royce. But I really wish I didn't have to see that botch. Especially after their victory. Especially after this victory, it's now making me nervous that Vince purposely wants Peyton Royce to be a terrible wrestler just to, just to push her for the sake of it. Vince wants to push her. You know, situations like that isn't exactly a good sign. Yes, the pinfall was a, was a good sign. That Peyton was the one that pinned Charlotte Flair. At least it wasn't Lacey. I can... Uh, like, the only... I can, I, I can accept that Charlotte lost. I'm perfectly fine with her losing the match. But I'm more accepting to it because it was Peyton Royce that got the pin. If it was Lacey Evans, I probably would have hated it a little bit more. But I'm... Okay with it, mostly because Peyton was the one that got the pin. But seeing Charlotte Flair lose this early, just only two weeks after coming back, she's been back for like two weeks, and she's already losing, is probably the biggest surprise that I think many fans would be surprised that Charlotte Flair would lose a match. Because, you know, everyone likes to joke about how she wins all the time. This was a rare occasion where Charlotte put over the younger talent. So, in my opinion, this was not too bad. The match itself, I wish it was a little bit better. What do you expect? You got Lacey Evans in that ring. And uh, Lacey and you got Peyton and Charlotte, Oscar, you know, they tried their best. And Peyton Royce, you know, really botched really bad. This just didn't look really good. And maybe, and I hope maybe, you know, do I want to see Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce challenge for the titles? Eh. I mean, do I really want to see Lacey Evans as a champion in 2021? Absolutely not. Do I want to see Peyton Royce as a champion in 2021? Yes, absolutely. But when you got Lacey and Peyton together, and I don't want to see one as champion, but I want to see the other as champion, that's where things get a little bit, you know, nerve-wracking. I don't think Charlotte and Oscar will lose the titles to them. No way. I mean, if it's to set up a rivalry between... If it's to set up a rivalry between Charlotte and Oscar, it's probably the only way it will happen. But I guess only time will tell. But... I didn't mind I didn't I didn't mind Charlotte losing and I didn't mind Peyton Royce being the one that pinned Charlotte but I was just very very surprised they had they had Ric Flair cost Charlotte Flair this match. And Charlotte was pretty pissed at uh, Ric Flair and I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. If someone if my father if my dad made me lose one of my matches, I'd be pretty pissed off too.
So then we had Matt Riddle face off against Bobby Trashley. And uh, I don't like either man. I don't like either man. And this probably was one of the worst matches I've ever seen. Considering I do not like these, these two at all. Bobby Lashley tapped out Matt Riddle. But the referee never saw the tap out. And then Riddle pinned Lashley. Because the referee never saw the tap out. Lashley thought he won. And then Riddle rolls him up for the pin. Serious, ser seriously, as much as I want that title off of Bobby Lashley, I don't want Riddle to be the guy to take it from him. And you know what? I'll pitch an idea. With what happens with Shelton and Cedric later on in this show, I'll pitch you guys an idea. We were going to have Shayna Baszler face off against Mandy Rose, but... But uh, Shayna Baszler attacked her uh, before the match started. And then Dana Brooke came out in her street clothes and challenged Shayna Baszler to a match. The match began, and as soon as, it, and, and as, soon as the match started, it was over. Shayna Baszler would lock in the Karafuda clutch on Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke would fall back, would fall down. She would grab Shayna Baszler's legs in a pinning position and pin her. For the one, two, three. So Dana Brooke pins Shayna Baszler in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds. And you know what? I found that absolutely hilarious. I found that absolutely hilarious. And I don't care if I upset anybody about this. If you guys have been following my channel... You know I do not like Shayna Baszler. You know I do not like Shayna Baszler whatsoever. Seeing Shayna Baszler lose in humiliating fashion to Dana Brooke literally made me laugh. Literally made me laugh. It was just so damn funny. I just couldn't help it. I just could not help it. I just found it hilarious. Shayna Baszler went from destroying everybody in the elimination chamber to being... To, to losing to Dana Brooke in 10 seconds. Oh, how the mighty have fallen for Shayna Baszler. Everybody thought she was going to be this big threat on Monday Night Raw. Remember the, remember the, the four times... Uh, I, I, I know I had a friend that would never shut up about it. Remember the four times that a Shayna Baszler tapped out Bailey? Yeah, where's that Shayna Baszler been? Where's that Shayna Baszler who, who taps out people? Where's that Shayna Baszler been? That Shayna Baszler is long gone. I've said it from the very beginning. Shayna Baszler sucks. I've been saying it for years. And, and I've been saying it for years. And I know for a fact that she sucks. And the fact that she lost to Dana Brooke in 10 seconds is literally funny and hilarious. She can, ta she can make Bailey tap out one trillion times. And I will still say Shayna Baszler sucks. I don't care how many times she taps out somebody. The, she sucks. And it was hilarious to see her lose to Dana Brooke. Mandy Rose would then knee Shayna Baszler in the face. Where the heck was Nia? I thought Nia Jax was her, her tag team partner. Where the heck was Nia? Where the heck has Nia been? This was the this was the first show without Nia Jax. Rare. This is the first show with no Nia Jax. I guess many would say that's a good thing. I guess, ma I guess many would think that's a good thing because no one likes Nia Jax. So we had Randy Orton face off against Jeff Hardy. Randy Orton was going around, you know, berating Big Show and Mark Henry and Ric Flair. And then we had a decent match with Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy. Randy Orton got the win. With the RKO. So. So. Not really much to say there. Then we had the Lucha Bum Party. Take on the lame business. Of Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. And. The hilarious thing about this. And the most hilarious thing about this. Is that the Hurt Business. Lost. I know. For the first time since. I think for the first time ever, the Hurt Business lost their matches. I don't, I can't remember the last time that every member of the Hurt Business lost a match on one show. 
This was literally the best thing that this was literally the best thing about this show. The hurt business losing their matches. That was literally the best thing. Obviously, Charlotte Flair was the best thing in the positive side, in my opinion. And I guess Shayna Baszler losing was probably a good thing as well. But the fact is, is that the Hurt Business lost. MVP went off. And I freaking laughed my ass off. MVP's reaction, just throwing the headphones off and smacking the the, 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 the uh, table. That was really hilarious. I could not start, stop laughing at MVP's reaction to Shelton Benjamin being pinned by Lince Dorado of the Lucha House Party. That was pretty damn hilarious. And then he goes off the handle... And it seems like Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander are having issues. Like, they're having issues. They're arguing about something. You know, they're going back and forth. And MVP is getting in the middle of them. You know, he's telling them to get along, get on the same page. And Cedric Alexander walks off. Now, you guys heard me say earlier that I said I had an idea. This is my idea. This is what I would do for WrestleMania. Bobby Lashley... Versus Shelton Benjamin versus Cedric Alexander. A triple threat match for the United States Championship. That is what I would do. I would have the Hurt Business implode and all th and, and Shelton and Cedric, they would want a shot at the United States title. And, and, and where do you think, and you guys maybe be asking, well, who does MVP side with? Well, I say he sides with, with uh, Bobby Lashley here. Because, he's, because he was mad at Shelton... And Cedric. So you could have Shelton and Cedric, you know, butt heads and do their thing while he just leaves them and, you know, he, he gets sick of them and then he stays with Lashley. He stays with Lashley, he gets sick of Shelton and Cedric's BS and he sides with Lashley and then you have Shelton and Cedric both want a shot at the United States title and I, that's what I'd do at WrestleMania. I would do a Hurt Business triple threat for the United States Championship, and I'd have Cedric Alexander be the one that wins. I would have Cedric Alexander be the one that wins the match at WrestleMania. I'd have Sh Cedric Alexander become the next United States Champion. That's what I'd do. Definitely WWE won't do that, that's for sure. They'd probably have Lashley beat them both, knowing this damn company, since this company loves Bobby Lashley so much. But that's what I would do. I'd do a Hurt Business triple threat at WrestleMania involving them. That's what I'd do. And that and that idea is way better than Matt Riddle becoming United States Champion. I don't even know why Vince likes this guy. He sucks. Then we had Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee for the WWE title. I actually really did enjoy this match. I actually enjoyed this match. I really loved this match. This match was great. You know, we had some pretty good spots. We had Drew McIntyre powerbomb Keith Lee on the edge of the table. That was pretty damn that was pretty damn sick. And we also had Keith Lee, a 300 pound man, a 300 pound man doing a cruiserweight Spanish fly. A 300 pound man doing that do, doing that is absolutely impressive. I gotta give my hat to I gotta tip my hat off to, to Keith Lee there. That was impressive. I was really hoping Keith Lee was going to win. But I, but in the back of my mind I kinda knew Drew was going to retain here. And that's what happened. Drew McIntyre retained. He would he hit the uh Claymore kick. Well, they don't call it that anymore. They just call it the Claymore, which is actually a lot better than adding the word kick to the end of it. But uh, Drew retained, and, you know, I'm not mad. This was a great match. It didn't bury Keith Lee at all. Watch everybody in the comments start telling... Uh, watch everyone start telling me Keith Lee is buried now. Because <laughs> he lost. He ain't buried. No way he is. But... the. But as I thought maybe Raw was going to end in a positive note. Before we get to that, I want to quickly mention the Randy Orton situation. They had Randy Orton end the show in a cliffhanger with Alexa Bliss. Randy said that he didn't put, put, set her on fire. And he said he hated himself for not doing it. 
I'm not gonna. I, I'm not really gonna say much about it. Like it's just really ridiculous how they do that, and then they just don't, you know, do anything major. Yeah, there was no Alexa Bliss on the show. Who cares? You know, I don't. I don't care. I don't care. I don't really care about Alexa Bliss anymore. So why do I care? I'll only start caring about Alexa Bliss again until I get the Alexa Bliss of old that I used to like. The Alexa Bliss that I used to like, the Alexa Bliss of old, that's when I'll start caring about Alexa again. Until I get the Alexa Bliss that I remember liking so much, that's when I'll start caring about Alexa Bliss again. So then we have the show end in possibly the worst way possible. And as you guys know, as you guys know how I started off this review, we had Goldberg. Oldberg, Oldberg, Oldberg come to the ring, challenging Drew McIntyre at the Royal Rumble for the WWE title. Really? Really? This is just stupid. This is just downright stupid. Sorry about that. I got, sorry about the interruption. Um, I heard some ruckus going on outside. Apparently my cat tried to bring in a bird inside my house and my parents kicked her out. Hey, it's better than a mouse, I guess. But anyway, sorry about sorry sorry about so sorry about that. But sorry about that uh, slight distraction. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, this uh, raw review. Terrible show, by the way. This was a terrible show. Wasn't really all that fond of it. This was a very bad episode, and um, this is not the answer to the ratings. This is not the answer to the ratings. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts down below. And I will see you all next time.